Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of AMC's The Walking Dead. This week we've seen Season 7, Episode 5, which is called Go-Getters. And uh, I know this review is a little bit late, but I had some uh, you know, personal stuff to, uh, to enjoy tonight. And, uh, <laughs> but I did watch the replay of this episode around uh, 12.30 tonight, so I wanted to get my review out to you guys as soon as I uh, got done watching it, like usual. Uh, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed this episode for sure. Um, I did like it. I don't think it was as strong as uh, Service was last week, um, but I think it was uh, an episode we uh, did need to have. You know, of course, with uh, checking with uh, you know Maggie, uh, you know Sasha, and you know, just the current state of the hilltop. It was just good to see Jesus again in general. Um, so I did think it was a fine episode, just not like one of the strongest, you know, so far necessarily. But I do think it was, uh, you know, fine enough uh, follow up to what we've been seeing lately. Um, you know, I, I think it's been a really strong season in general so far, but it has felt a little bit uh, disjointed with, you know, jumping from single group to single group, really. But it seems like they're, you know, maybe going to be start to starting to mix it up a little bit more or like combine them into an episode. Uh, you know, it sort of makes sense, at least for the first handful of episodes, sort of checking with everyone one by one, give them all their initial uh, focus. Um, but I just hope they don't really keep it up for, you know, the whole half or anything. Um, but yeah. You know, so of course the main thing was just seeing uh, the current state of uh, Maggie and such. And of course we know that uh, Rick and the others back at Alexandria had, uh, you know, lied about her being dead. Of course, with uh, you know Negan's visit, you know Father Gabriel even you know had uh, dug a grave for her, which is you know quick thinking on his part or you know clever on his part, um, because we knew what fate apparently awaited her if uh, Negan had uh, thought she had made it, you know basically probably becoming one of his uh, you know wives as uh, you know, he kind of calls them. So Maggie wakes up. Um, you know, there's some uh, change with the uh, baby's attachments inside of her, but the baby seems to be okay. And Sasha, you know, she's been you know looking on Maggie, you know, every chance she can. She's literally waiting outside the door for her. Um, you know, Sasha is a character I still don't really care for that much for some reason. Um, but you know, I do like her and how uh, she's looking after Maggie like this. And uh, she also gives uh, Maggie. You know, Glenn's uh, pocket watch, which was uh, given to him originally by Herschel back in season two, if you guys remember that. So I'm glad that that thing's still floating around. You know, it's like this uh, one little piece of Herschel we still have left, and it still sticks out in my mind when he gave that to him. Um, and now uh, Maggie has it, and she gives it to Enid at the end. Um, and uh, Jesus, you know, he had also uh, dropped off uh, flowers and such, you know, purple for uh, strength and different things like that, and then green on the graves for, uh, I don't know if it's for, like, uh, healing or, uh, you know, just sort of, like, uh, basically picking themselves back up, really. But, of course, uh, you know, Gregory, played by Xander Berkeley, <laughs> you know, he, uh, it's fun to see more of him again. Um, I really like Xander Berkeley as an actor, you know, I've seen him on, uh, you know, Being Human on Sci-Fi. Uh, you know, he's good on that. Then also as uh, Percy, the, the main villain on uh, Nikita. Um, he's just a fantastic actor, and he plays, <laughs> he plays the arrogant uh, jackass here pretty well. Um, you know, of course, uh, Gregory wants them to leave. Um, so he can have plausible deniability about, you know, working with them so closely. Um, you know, so you can say that at least laughter, he at least hasn't uh, had any direct connection with them uh, since their initial dealings that, uh, you know, Simon had uh, talked to him about a little bit later on in the episode. Um, but luckily Jesus is able to sort of uh, get him to uh, keep him there for a night anyway. But, you know, uh, Jesus isn't going to be willing just to let him go. Uh, you know, Jesus' as a character is touched on a little bit more in this episode, you know, how he, he's a well-spoken person, you know, he has a very good heart and such, but, you know, he doesn't really think of himself as a uh, leader, you know, he's more like a follower who, follower who can sort of, like, rise up, you know, given the right uh, leadership, which, uh, which, uh, you know, Gregory doesn't really have, but Jesus is definitely going to be an essential member to the group, I think. We briefly, briefly see uh, Rick and Michonne in this episode. Um, 
And like I said, they haven't been mixing in the characters uh, much, but... And this doesn't really count either, because we see them for like a minute at the beginning, and that was it. <laughs> um, but we get Rick and some of the others are going on the supply run, because they need to find, you know, some good stuff for uh, Negan to get when he uh, shows up next week. And, or, you know, in the show's timeline, the you know, next week Negan's supposed to, you know, gather stuff from him. You know, he needs to find some, actually, some notable items, not just, you know, like, what they have of the food and such. I'm um, starting to really like wow when he can write. <laughs> um, and uh, Rick, you know, he uh, goes to kiss Michonne on the cheek because, you know, he knows there's been some distance, some disagreement between them. But Michonne is willing to take him in and he you know, does full on, you know, lip lock. So that was, that was nice to see. Um, you know, so despite where they stand on this, they still have this, uh, you know, of course, love and appreciation for each other no matter what they go through. So, you know. Um, you know, I, I watched uh, Trev Chantu's review on on this. You know, he says the romantic stuff is just for the girls, but you know, a guy, you know, a guy can appreciate things like this too if it's done right. And R Rashon definitely is. Um, but yeah, you know, Carl briefly talks to Michonne about how they still disagree with Rick, and Michonne says, you know, she does. She still doesn't know if uh, going at Sneegan would be, you know, would result in the best outcome necessarily either. Uh, but Carl, of course, he's a lot more impulsive. He's a lot more sort of uh, reckless in a way, and that sort of plays into what he does at the end. Of the <coughs> excuse me, at the end of the episode. Um, you know, Enid, she goes off to the hilltop. She just wants to find out what's going on with Maggie. Uh, Sasha, she she sort of uh, brings up what I talked about with Jesus earlier. How he has to try to do more than just you know help and do what he can. He has to sort of like rise up and sort of like push back against Gregory a little bit more. And uh, Jesus gives uh, Sasha a necklace I found with Abraham. And it's a little bit weird um, because I, I swear that was the necklace that Rosita had given to uh, Abraham at one point. Um, so it felt a little bit awkward that that happened there, but maybe uh, Sasha realizes that and she'll give it back to Rosita at some point. I don't know. Um, but Jesus also you know, respected uh, Abraham, and he is also the only... Uh, Abraham is only the only person to him that can make him laugh and wince at the same time as something he said. Um, Carl, he uh, saves Enid. You know, he said he wasn't going to save her anymore, but he saves her by crashing into Walker with a car. And then they go to the hilltop together. The saviors, they end up lighting this fire and uh, you know, driving this car into the hilltop, you know, blaring this music to draw in all these walkers. Um, just to simply send a message, you know, show who's the boss, as Gregory said later on, as well as just making this example and showing, uh, you know, just how they do things, <laughs> you know, really. Um, so we get, you know, a few, a few decent kills from, you know, like, uh, you know, Jesus who jumps down, you know, just like climbs down the pillars to the mansion Gregory's in, um, as well as uh, Sasha helping out, you know, and killing the walkers as well. And uh, Maggie, she ends up destroying the car with, uh, so, I don't know, it wasn't a bulldozer, but I forget what it's called exactly, but this truck, basically, she runs it over, and she tells uh, Jesus about it, or uh, Enid about it a little bit later, how she actually did that to a uh, you know, boy she was involved with before, <laughs> um, you know, back when she was a teenager. She destroyed his car like that, so, you know, really sticking it to him. Um... Then we had uh, Enid and Carl on the road to the hilltop. Uh, Carl, he ends up finding these roller skates, so him and Enid, Enid uh, hold hands and uh, you know got you know roller skate down the street together. So it was kind of nice. Um, it's weird to see both of them just smiling and <laughs> holding hands like that. Um, of course, uh, Simon visits the next morning or the next afternoon, and uh, I liked is a conversation with Gregory here. Of course, Gregory just uh, feeling very uncomfortable, but just at the same time, just kissing up and, uh, <laughs> you know, sucking up to uh, Simon as much as he can here, you know. And so I like some of their conversations here. Uh, they admire Gregory's painting together that Gregory, uh, Gregory talks so highly of. And uh, just different little, uh, you know, cues between uh, Stephen Oag and uh, Sandra Berkeley here. I thought they were, you know, pretty fun in this scene together. You know, they paid off of each other pretty well, even though they're obviously on, uh, you know, two different wavelengths, so however uh, Gregory would like to hide that. Um, 
At first, you know, Gregory's a jackass, but at first I uh, thought he was actually going to lie about Maggie and Sasha and actually, you know, keep them hidden. Um, but he goes to open this closet, he goes to show it to Simon, and, you know, it's it's a it's a closet full of alcohol, basically. And, uh, you know, Simon's not a Scotchman, but he says Negan will like it, so he takes the whole box. And uh, we find out later, though, that Gregory actually thought that's a closet Maggie and uh, Sasha were hiding in. Um, you know, so he was basically just going to turn him over, so, yeah, Gregory's still, you know, a dick. Um, that was fine. Uh, we get a, we get a kiss between, uh, Carl and, Eni and, uh, Enid, you know, it was nice, it is what it is. Um, you know, Enid wants Carl to stay, not to try and just go after him, even though she understands why Carl is. As they talk about, he's not doing it, you know, for the sake of, uh, Abraham or, uh, Glenn or, you know, you know, how, for how much Ellen feels or anything like that. He's doing it for him, just like as a reaction from him personally. And you sort of get that perspective on it, I guess. And then uh, Gregory, like I said, Gregory did think Maggie and Sasha are in that closet. Maggie uh, punches Gregory and, uh, you know, basically puts him in his place, telling him to call her by her name, you know, Maggie Ree. Of course, she, you know, has taken that Glenn's name and such since they got Zombie Apocalypse married a while ago. Um, and uh, Sasha has this little assignment for Jesus to find out where Negan's actually living at, you know, his uh, main base, so that'll be useful. Um, maybe Jesus will even, uh, you know, see Daryl there, maybe help him out somehow. I don't know if he'll be able to get that directly involved, um, but it'll be good for uh, Jesus to discover this and hope maybe somehow relay this information to Rick, even though they can't do too much right now, at least until they uh, join up with the, with the kingdom or something. Um, but Sasha doesn't want Jesus to tell Maggie, you know, I don't, just don't know if it's the mission or what, but, uh, and, uh, Jesus, you know, of course he hops onto the back of one of the Savior's trucks as they're leaving, and he sees Carl, you know, and he's doing the same, so that should be an interesting, uh, situation. But, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, uh, I did like this episode overall, um, but I didn't think it was, like, overly exciting or anything, but I like some of the, you know, back and forth between, uh, Gregory and, uh, Simon here. And, you know, stuff with the recognition at the beginning was nice, as well as uh, Carl and Enid. And, uh, you know, seeing Maggie again, of course, was uh, necessary. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a solid episode, just not anything, you know, like, uh, overly, you know, good or anything like that. But, you know, it was fine, and, you know, it was a reasonable, you know, follow-up. So, yeah, I'm going to give this episode about an 8.3 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.